I remember the very first case we had, and uh, I remember his name, I remember his face, pretty much everything about him. That was in 1983, two years after um, they, in America, in San Francisco in particular, first noted these extraordinary number of people with these infections that showed that their immune systems weren't working. So we knew sooner or later it, it was bound to happen here and it was two years later, as I say, when we admitted this young man who had one of these infections that we only really ever see in people whose immune system is fundamentally destroyed. And he was an extremely brave young man because we, he knew perfectly well we had no effective treatment at that point except for the infections from which he was suffering. We didn't have anything for the underlying condition. We didn't even in 1983 really know what the underlying condition was, just what it did to you. In the early days of the HIV epidemic in South Africa, again, the gay community was singled out as the people that had HIV. That was mainly because the people who were catching HIV in those times were white people with money who could go to get tested. And some of them were indeed um, um, sort of a gay people. But um, the epidemic in Africa as a whole, and South Africa specifically, is very much a heterosexual epidemic. When the HIV epidemic first started, um, it, amongst the majority black community, it was very stigmatised. It wasn't talked about. People just wasted away quietly in their houses. If anyone admitted to having HIV, they st stood a very real chance of being killed or stoned to death. And there were certain um, quite famous examples of that, of women who came out and said they were positive and were killed. this leaflet when it arrives. If you ignore AIDS, it could be the death of you. So don't die of ignorance. The underlying message of the tombstones was safe sex, and it worked. And alongside the reduction in these other um, sexually transmitted infections, which at the time were, were very easy to monitor, there must have been a big reduction in the transmission of HIV as well. There had to have been. I think we've got some, we've got some very, very quick tests now, and I think uh, now that they're available, um, the, the stigma of having to go along and have a, a blood test and wait weeks and weeks to find out the results, um, those days are, are past. There were certain very famous events that made a huge difference, and I think the most memorable, because she was so telegenic, was Princess Diana, when she embraced a so-called AIDS victim. The term was still used in those days, and you had this uh, picture that went around the world of this very beautiful woman and this young man wasted by this disease and she was just treating him as a fellow human being, and that was extremely powerful. I, I've never in my working life seen such a total transformation has happened um, when antiretroviral therapy became established. That was in 1996, and really everything to do with HIV is before or after 1996. 
with the advent of antiretrovirals and with um, people seeing what antiretrovirals can do, I noticed a huge change over my time there. From a time when you couldn't get anyone te to test to a time now where people are coming forward and wanting to test. Firstly, if a person is not, not aware that they're HIV positive, then they can't do anything to protect their sexual partners necessarily of becoming infected. The second thing is if you're not aware that you're infected, then you're not able to access treatment. Um, when I started in 2000, the hospital I was working at it was a small hospital in northern KwaZulu Natal called Klebisa, and um, the bed occupancy rate ran at about 120%. That meant that the beds were full and there were patients underneath the beds. Now, most recently, when I was working and visiting that hospital, occupancy rates are down to about 70%, and the people who are in hospital are in hospital with um, still mainly HIV related conditions, but there's people in there with diabetics, diabetes, and strokes who wouldn't have been admitted before because there was no space for them. Treatment is effective not only at reducing the amount of virus in the blood, but also in the genital tract. Therefore, theoretically, um, putting somebody on treatment renders them much less infectious um, to their sexual partners. So what we can have here is if we can diagnose people, get them on treatment, we can reduce the uh, infectivity of the population as a whole and therefore we should be able to slow the spread of the epidemic. The HIV is seen as a success story and I think with any success story you can feel as though you've achieved what you wanted to achieve. And um, in your previous questions you asked about what can be, do, what can be done in terms of the epidemic, um, how, how you can reduce the number of infections and as, as we said the, the key there is diagnose the undiagnosed. So everybody with TB should have a, an HIV test. Everybody with lymphoma should have an HIV test. Uh, and there is a, a wide group of people which we call targeted testing, really, where we are trying to encourage people that the risks are, that these people will be HIV positive is significant enough to make a test worthwhile. So the vast majority of people who contract HIV are, are infected by straightforward heterosexual sexual intercourse. And that's an awful lot of people in the world. So first of all, we have to get that message across that there is nothing to be ashamed of about, about being HIV positive. We also have to push on the prevention campaign so that people understand how HIV is transmitted and how they can prevent themselves from becoming infected. Once we've done that, we, d we do need really easy, um, easy facilities available to everybody for testing, and not just the general public, but also hard to reach populations. First of all, we know that we have a third of our HIV positive diagnosis in the UK who are actually unaware that they're infected. And it's the fact that people don't consider themselves at risk and therefore they're not coming forwards for, for testing. So that's on the individual basis. Secondly, there still is a lot of stigma around um, surrounding HIV and that puts people off from getting HIV tested. What we need to do is we need to completely normalize HIV testing, make it just another routine blood test. If we can do that, and we're testing people who are sexually active on, a, say, an annual basis, if we can pick up the HIV diagnosis early, get people on treatment early, then that is what you know, success will look like.